This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. I'm back at you with another terrific video story, and you can see the title on your screen. Her young AP skipped out. Now my pregnant ex-wife wants me back. And as the title implies, this is a story about a guy who was married for a long time, thought he had a great marriage, had two kids, everything was going well, and then his wife started acting weird, and then one day she just up and leaves. She found a new young boyfriend and wanted nothing to do with her husband. And not only that, wanted really nothing to do with her family. But in the end, our man gets karma. And I don't want to give too much away, so let's get right into it. He starts off and he says, I was married to my ex-wife for just shy of 18 years when we divorced three years ago. We have two adult sons who were 16 and 17 at the time. They're both in college now and I couldn't be more proud of them. We had what everyone thought was a very good marriage, right up to the point when it seemed to fall apart overnight. I started noticing a change in her behavior during the pandemic. At first, I thought she was just experiencing depression and anxiety like many people were back then. Then out of nowhere, she became very moody and distant, not just to me, but our sons and her parents too. Now that's a major red flag. She was constantly glued to her phone for what she claimed were work-related issues, and our love life languished. I brushed it off due to the circumstances. Now that's a big mistake. You never want to brush those things off. Then one day she went out for a drive and didn't return for hours. I was worried and tried calling her multiple times, but the only response she sent back was a text stating she wouldn't be home for a while, and there was a lasagna and salad for me and the boys in the fridge. Well, at least she made him something to eat. I sent her a text back asking where she was and what was going on, but she never replied back. And that is a three alarm red flag there. You know she's up to no good. She eventually returned home at 11 o'clock that night, and I greeted her at the door and demanded she tell me what was going on. She told me she didn't want to talk about it and just wanted to go to bed. I told her she wasn't going anywhere until she told me where she was and who she was with. She refused to answer, and I didn't want to cause a scene with our boys in the house, so I backed off, and she went up and took a bath and went to bed without saying a word to me. Can you imagine that? After she went upstairs, the boys came down to talk to me as they had been listening to our conversation. They were stunned and asked why their mom was mad at everyone, for which I had no idea. So she just went totally psycho. I slept on the couch that night and woke up around 6 the next morning. I went upstairs hoping to talk to her, but she had already left the house. I called her cell repeatedly, but she didn't answer and eventually must have turned off her phone as the call started going straight to voicemail. Another red flag. She's just full of red flags here. She ended up calling me back a half hour later when I was in the shower. I got out and answered and again demanded she tell me what was going on. Now listen to what she says next. She interrupted me with the words, there's someone else, to which my immediate response was, what? She continued saying she had been seeing another man for the past three months and she was in love with him. To say I was crushed was an understatement. I was totally wiped out. The time frame she gave lined up almost exactly to when her demeanor started changing. You see why you don't ignore those red flags? I wish I would have demanded answers back then, but to be honest, I didn't think anything of it. She told me I was too engaged with our son's lives to even recognize she existed. Yes, it's true. I spent a lot of time with them as they both play multiple sports, but so did she. There are kids, and for God's sakes, that's what good parents do. Absolutely, she's just being selfish here. She apparently didn't feel the same and felt like we were neglecting her. She told me she needed space to figure things out and wouldn't be coming home for a few days. So just like that, she's up and out of there. When she said this, my mood switched to anger, and I demanded she give me answers. She went silent, then told me she didn't like my tone and hung up on me. I was totally shocked as she had never acted this way before. It was like a demon had taken over her body and the wife I knew no longer existed. 
I tried calling her several times, but she had her phone off and the calls went straight to voicemail. So she didn't want any conversation with him. She totally shut him out. I left her a message and followed it up with a text stating if she didn't come home this evening, that I would be filing for divorce. She never responded and never came home that night. By this time, I had alerted her parents and sister, and they tried reaching her, but she didn't respond to them either. As you can imagine, my sons were really broken up about this. They loved and respected their mother and always held her in the highest regard. I didn't tell them what she told me, and instead reassured them everything would be okay and we'd all get through this. The following day, I called her office and discovered through one of her co-workers that she had taken the week off. I knew she was likely with her lover, so I decided to give it 48 hours, and if she didn't come back, I would seek out a lawyer to discuss my options. Good, that's what you should do. She didn't come home or call, so on Thursday of that week, I set off to meet a lawyer my uncle recommended. She was an older lady, but very sharp and experienced at handling divorces. She explained to me that my wife was in the fog of the affair now. She told me she's seen this countless times over the years and it's a phase all cheaters go through. She recommended I serve my wife with divorce papers on the grounds of infidelity and abandonment, even if I wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do. She said in her experience, this usually snaps the wayward spouse out of the fog and brings them to their senses. If it didn't, then I'd know for sure the relationship was finished. Well, let me tell you something. If she's cheating on you, it's already finished. I followed her advice, and the following week, my wife was served at her office. She didn't respond for days, and I didn't attempt to contact her. During this time, she wasn't communicating with her family either, and none of us knew where she was. So this is like a runaway bride situation. She finally ended up calling me a week later, stating she got the paperwork and wanted a divorce also. Without prompting her, she told me she hadn't felt passion in our marriage for years and has been miserable. Now remember that. She said she loved me and our sons, but felt like an outsider in our lives. Again, this woman is just totally selfish. Her words hurt me worse than anything I had experienced before. I told her I thought she was happy as she always seemed to be until recently. I think she sensed I was getting emotional and told me it wasn't any one thing I did, stating I was a perfect husband and father. She said she just felt empty and alone and now she felt alive again. Oh boy. I couldn't believe what she was saying and this time I ended up hanging up on her. Well, good for you. The divorce process was initiated, however, it was slow due to the court backlog from the pandemic nonsense. During the waiting period, I never interacted with her, and our sons basically cut all contact with her. I can't blame them. Initially, she was distant, but then tried to make amends with them, but by that time, they didn't want anything to do with her. I can't blame them for not wanting anything to do with her. I'd probably feel the same. I talked to them and explained I was fine with them having a good relationship with their mother, and in fact, I wanted that, but they weren't interested. Months went by, and my lawyer finally got word that our case was scheduled 60 days out. While I was disappointed with the delay, I was glad I had a firm date when everything would be over with. Around this same time, I found out through my father-in-law that my 42-year-old wife was six months pregnant. He also informed me the AP was a 31-year-old single guy from her office, so this young guy was showing her attention, and she just couldn't resist it. At that point, her father had stopped talking to her and forbid her coming to his house. While I had grown calloused about her at that point, this news hit me out of left field. I felt angry while at the same time relieved knowing I would soon be rid of her. I relayed this new information to my lawyer and asked if I should notify their employer. She told me not to do this until after the divorce is finalized as she didn't want to sidetrack the proceedings or risk me having to pay alimony. Listen to your lawyer. She explained that since my wife obviously committed adultery and abandoned her family, I wouldn't be on the hook for alimony or child support. However, a sympathetic judge might decide to throw some alimony her way, and we didn't want that to happen. Now, we're at a point in this video where I want to remind you, if you like what you've heard so far, be sure to hit that like button right now. That will help out the channel tremendously and also help get this video seen by people all over the world. Now, let's go on with the story. Now, listen to this. 
About three weeks out from our hearing, out of the blue, I received multiple calls from my wife. I ignored them and she left me frantic messages asking me to please call her as soon as possible. I advised my lawyer of this and she told me not to respond and to let her call to see what she wants. She spoke to my wife who told her she wanted to come back home to her family. Imagine that. My wife said she realized now what a terrible mistake she had made and was very sorry for what she had done. She apparently was still living with her lover at the time, but told my lawyer she didn't want that relationship any longer as she didn't belong there. So I guess the fog had lifted by this point. My attorney told me I didn't have to respond and recommended I not do so, but I told her I'd like to personally speak to my wife to tell her no. I told her it would give me great satisfaction to do so after what she put me through. My lawyer wasn't wild about this, but agreed on the condition the call be made from her office and that it be recorded. Now, if it was me, I probably wouldn't have even responded. The following afternoon, I went over to her office for the call. My lawyer called my wife on speakerphone, and when she answered, she announced the call was being recorded and asked my wife if she agreed to this. My wife said yes, and my lawyer said she was going to leave the room so we could talk. After my lawyer closed the door, my wife wasted no time and immediately started apologizing, telling me, Baby, I'm so sorry. And you know what I say to that? Blah. I mean, after what she told you, you know this is all just a bunch of BS. She said she woke up one day and had a, What have I done moment. She told me she wanted to come home right now, saying she wanted her family back and wanted to stop the divorce proceedings. Don't you dare. I told her it was too late for that and the damage had been done. When she heard this, she started crying. No surprise there. She then told me she was having a son and that she wanted him to be raised in a good home with a loving family. Well, where's your boyfriend? She then went on to tell me that I was the best father in the world and she wanted me to be her son's father. Remember all those things she told him up front about, oh, he was spending too much time with his kids and never paid attention to her and all this stuff. Now she's saying, oh, you were the best father in the world and she wants him to be her son's father. Unbelievable. Her statements caught me off guard, so I went silent for a few moments, then told her congratulations and wished her and her unborn child well. I then told her I had no interest in doing that. She kept crying and going on about how she wanted her family back and that this whole thing was a result of a mental breakdown she had due to the pandemic. So she's using that as an excuse, which you all know is just total malarkey. I held my ground and told her our marriage was over and eventually had to end the call as wasn't accepting what I was saying. So I think he meant to say she wasn't accepting what I was saying. After that, I called her parents and told them what just happened and they couldn't believe it. Apparently, the previous night, she had called her sister and told her she had a change of heart about everything and was very remorseful. In the days that followed, she continued by sending me texts asking me to reconsider, but I stood my ground and the divorce eventually went through. We split things and I actually ended up keeping a little more than my share of the assets, which was a nice surprise. There was no child support or alimony due to the situation and I bought out her half of the house. She had her son a few months later and split up with her lover a short time after that. So Chad was out the door as soon as the baby was born. Just after she split with him, my sons made up with her as they really wanted to meet their little brother. When they approached me about this, I encouraged them as I wanted them to have a good relationship with their mom. I also wanted them to be there for their little brother as he was just an innocent party in this crazy soap opera. Well, that's nice of this guy and that's the way he should have responded. You know, it's really a tough situation for these affair kids because, you know, you got a situation like this where oftentimes the betrayed spouse doesn't want anything to do with them. And then the mother who had the child feels resentment towards them for breaking up their marriage, even though she's the one who cheated and broke up the marriage. And then their dad is a Chad and he wants nothing to do with them. So these poor kids are just left there. So this guy is handling this situation correctly, I think. Two years have passed since, and I've been very happy living a life of a single father. At this point, I have no interest in dating, even though I've had plenty of opportunities. I like my life just like it is, and I want to enjoy myself for a while. 
My ex-wife has apparently mistaken this for an opportunity for us getting back together. Right after she split from her lover, she sent me a text letting me know, stating that although they had just broken up, they hadn't been a couple for months. I felt like texting her back stating I didn't give a shit, but instead decided not to respond. And I think that was smart. She doesn't deserve a response after what she did. The next time I saw her was at our oldest son's graduation. I threw him a nice party at the house and had both our families and our friends there. My wife came with her son. I warmly greeted them when they arrived but tried avoiding contact with her for the rest of the day. As the crowd started thinning out, I noticed she was still hanging back. I really wasn't interested in having a conversation, so I asked her sister to encourage her to leave when they left without coming right out and saying I told her this. She did that and my ex-wife got up to leave with them, but asked to have a moment with me before departing. There were people all around at the time, so I walked her out to where I have my fire pit and we had a brief discussion there. She thanked me for hosting a great party for our son and said she again wanted to tell me how sorry she was for what she had done and that she still misses me every day and loves me with all her heart. And again, that is just, bleh. you know, that's totally superficial and not genuine. At least, I don't believe it's genuine. I told her her apology was appreciated but not necessary as I was past all that now and was very happy with my new life. That's the indifference, you know, and that's going to drive her crazy knowing that, hey, you've moved past her. She asked if I was seeing anyone and I said I wasn't. I told her my sole focus in life now was taking care of my sons and myself and I had no interest in dating right now. She looked at me and told me she was miserable. She then said she needed me and her son needed me and she wanted to come back home. She said she would do anything I wanted and promised to make me the happiest man in the world if I'd give her a chance. She then started crying and buried her face in her hands. She said her son was a great kid and that I would love him if I spent time with him. After digesting all that for a minute, I told her I wished her and her son all the best, but I would not be part of their lives in any meaningful way. I told her I was happy with my new life now and was looking forward to my future, whatever that might be, but those plans did not include her. And that was a very strong statement to tell her. She told me she felt terrible that her son was going to grow up without a good father and needed a strong man in his life like me. I told her he has strong men in his life, as I know her father her brother-in-law, and my sons would be there to guide him as he grows up. After that, I stood up and gave her a hug and walked her back to the party. That was a tough conversation, but I felt so relieved after having it. It was necessary and a long time in coming. While she had given me many great years, the year after she left was the worst year of my life, and I'll never put myself through that again. And that's the end of the story. Now, I think this guy handled the situation very well. The only thing I can point to is when he didn't address those red flags right out of the gate. But again, you know, he had been married to this woman for so long. He was just thinking, oh, this was just a phase. You know, he didn't think anything like that was going on. And he got the surprise of his life. So I really can't fault him too much for that. But after he found out what was really going on, he took immediate action and moved on with his life. And now he's doing great. So hats off to this OP. And now I want to take a look at what I think are the morals of the story. The first one, watch out for the red flags and address them promptly. That's what I was just talking about. It's one thing to identify the red flags, but you need to address them as they're happening. Next, most women cannot resist the lure of attention and validation. We've talked about this over and over again, and especially when it's from a younger man. Next, and related to that, and this is a warning for the ladies out there, younger men typically do not find older women desirable. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail from women about this, but you have to face facts. It's true. They see older women as easy targets. So remember that, ladies, when you got some young guy chasing you down, it's not so much he's interested in you for a relationship, He's probably interested in you for one thing and one thing only. Next, 
A woman who cheats on a man has absolutely no respect for him. So don't believe anything they say after the fact when they're trying to get back with you. Because guess what? They totally disrespect you, regardless of what they say. And related to that, a woman who expects a man to raise an affair child has negative respect for him. I mean, just the nerve of her coming back and saying, hey, I want this child to have a good father and I want you to be his father when I cheated on you with another man to have this baby. I mean, that is just totally disrespectful and totally ridiculous when you think about it. And finally, indifference and living your best life is the best possible, and I forgot to put the word revenge there, but it is the best possible revenge you can get. I've said this countless times. Guys, if something like this ever happens to you, you can recover. What you do is you move forward, you make yourself strong, you put that cheating wife or girlfriend in the past, and you move forward with your life, just like this guy has done, and you'll be fine. So those are my thoughts, and now I want to hear from you. What did you think about this story, and how do you think this guy handled it? Would you have done what he did, or would you have done something completely different? Tell us about it in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to you on the next one.